MMORPGs. It stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. Make your avatar. Explore the world. Discover its secrets. Get stronger. Be immersed. And do it with other people. Make friends while you're at it. These are what the genre offers. Their appeal. And for a time, I was actually into them. I'd express myself with how my character looked, primed my gear into preparation, and out I went to slay the monsters encroaching the land. Along the way, I'd meet others like me, and we found a common goal, to delve into further depths too dangerous to be taken on alone. So we fought together. But suddenly, I stopped. There was something that put out the fire that kept me going in these games. Playing MMOs for reasons other than to pass the time, like mindless enjoyment, or to meet a new friend, the incentives just gone. In fact, all the intrinsic value was now on reasons not to play them. It made me say, I don't know if I can ever play again. All because of something I learned. And that thing's the Skinner Box. A learning process that can influence behavior through rewards. It involves a rat and a button. There's also the box maker that wants the rat to keep pressing the button, perhaps for research purposes or to print money. When the button is pressed, food comes out. But not always. And there are various ways to design the box in order to influence the rodent inside. This is what is known as operant conditioning, a way to sway behavior with reinforcement and punishment. We'll get to these two terms, but first let's talk about schedules, i.e. when do we reward the button pressing. 1. Fixed interval schedule, wherein a reward is given when the button is pressed after a certain amount of time has passed, like every 5 minutes or 24 hours. So don't forget to log in every day and get 5 headshots to get extra points, or punch in when you come to work. 2. Fix Ratio Schedule, wherein a reward is given after a certain number of button presses. It's reliable and consistent. No matter what side of the bed you wake up that morning, you can be assured that you'll get 700 experience points once you slay 30 pink slimes for the distressed maid. For this reason, it's the least effective schedule at keeping the rat mashing, a problem that's easily circumvented by introducing the element of randomness. 3. Variable Ratio Schedule, wherein a reward is given after a random number of button presses. See that bone samurai? Well, the first time you kill it, it could very well drop its own sword. I mean, it's true in theory, because it's a 0.01% chance, that's 1 in 10,000. Unfortunately, this also means that you could get it in your 20th kill, your 150th, your 9,001st, which means you better keep pressing. The next one could be a jackpot. And 4. Variable Interval Schedule where a reward is given when the button is pressed after a random amount of time has passed. And this comes in the form of treasure chests that we fill over time. But you won't know when, so keep checking back. Nope, nothing yet. And if it's not clear yet, yep, these are being applied in game design. Not for me to have fun, no. It's more so that I wouldn't stop playing. Still, it's a game. I was supposedly having fun. I did already play for hundreds of hours. And I remember times when I had genuinely taken pleasure and satisfaction from the game. It felt rewarding. But how? Well, there are the flashy effects and animations that trigger when you level up or open the treasure chest. There's also the value of the items we collect. Now, strange as it may seem, yes, our digital possessions felt inherently attached to our ego. Kind of like NFTs. Eh. Lastly, there is time itself. You can get a sense that something was difficult because of how long it took. So I felt justified when I'd say, you know how long it took to get this merman spear? 50 hours. Um, but they take one hit. All of these are what is called positive reinforcement. Manipulative design choices like to give these plenty early on, only to become more and more difficult to accumulate. Your first few level ups are easy, but gets progressively harder. Games with loot boxes give you free samples. Your first match in Tinder, that's a bot. They agree to you and feign interest, and they never respond again. In the MMO I used to play, getting from level 96 to 99 requires the same amount of VXP to get from level 1 to 96. But hey, it's worth it for that blue aura, right? Still, rewards, of course, have to be appealing for you to keep coming back. But what if it's more unappealing to not press the button? What if you got zapped by the forces that be if you stop for too long? Well, it turns out this was very effective. Now clearly, games can't cause physical pain, so instead, they turn to our aversion to loss. A psychological principle that states we'd rather not gain anything than lose something. Like when your character got buffed, you were like, pretty cool, let's try it out. But when they got nerfed, you started drafting death threats addressed to the devs. So here's the challenge. Can you think of any samples? I have some. In October 2021, Ubisoft sent out an email blast to players of Far Cry 6, implying that you can do better in the game. 
by increasing the number of hours you've played for one. In Animal Crossing, towns grow weeds over time. Now it seems only mildly bothersome, but if you want that gold watering can, you better mitigate these as they affect your town rating. The MMO I played had Guild Wars to compete for castle rights. Of course, you have to be logged in at this specific time in order to defend it at all. In the real world sample, that 5 bucks off coupon for that 15 buck coffee, it expires tomorrow. So I guess I better buy one since I'll end up saving money. Yeah, no, that's still 10 bucks versus not spending at all. Now let me repeat, these design choices were put in my game not so that I'll have fun, but instead so that I'll play more. But that's not to say operant conditioning is all bad. I was averse to Monster Hunter games until I really tried it out. And what I found rewarding was not the loot, nor the progression, not the story, because it barely had a story. Every monster the game threw at me was becoming harder and harder, but coming out victorious, it just felt too damn good. So I still play video games. I mean, clearly. But I found a pattern in the difference between how I and my friends play games. They'd kept repeating heists in GTA to farm cash, while I just wanted to tow them with a the helicopter. In Phasmophobia, they'd finish the investigations as fast as possible, just for the reward money, and I wouldn't get out of the house until I got a photo of the ghost, often at the cost of my survival. They'd mine for each block their houses were to be built on, while I eventually decided to turn on creative mode to create a floating apocalypse. They'd kill demons one after another with repeated one button spellcasting. I did the same thing, not much of a choice, but with an upside down controller. Their goals were numbers, and mine were anything but. The downside is I think I became the troll that just wants to have fun, but I also think enjoyment quickly caps out when the activity is brain dead. If the goal involves accumulating something over time, if it's quantifiable in its essence, I become wary. Even more so if the game has special rewards for this kind of milestone. Now high scores are quantifiable, yes, but they reset when you try again. But the win counts do, so I focus on the win ratio. So, MMOs, looter shooters, games with loot boxes and free games in general, saying no to them is not a decision for me. It's a default. It fills me with dread just thinking about how these games will manipulate me, just so that I'll play more. And in the case of games as a service, eventually spend real money. Now one of my friends told me he likes grinding because it has a therapeutic effect. I wasn't able to inquire what it is he needed to heal, but it was most likely the stress from working a job. Personally, I think it's a waste of valuable time to recycle a comfortable experience, but ultimately it's his choice. And here was my choice. 10 years ago, I said farewell to my 3 level 99 characters, the 3 million zeni I accumulated, the overpowered horns, my favorite cursed blade, and all the friends I made along the way. If there's anything I regret, it's that the game is not sentient. It won't. It can't. Empathize when I say, I spent uncountable hours on you, during which I let myself go. I got fat, stopped playing basketball with my neighbors, dropped out of college twice, all because you wanted me to keep playing. You didn't care if I was having fun. You didn't care about me at all. Give it all back, you bastard. I quote from an article in Kotaku, As with any form of entertainment, it is the responsibility of each individual player to monitor his or her own playing habits and prioritize his or her time as necessary. It is not our place to monitor or limit how individuals spend their free time. And it's true, but that's quite dirty to say when you try to influence our decisions. Like how cigarettes have nicotine, or how junk food has tons of flavor boosters, and dating apps have bots. At least cigarettes now have health disclaimers. But for me, games don't have to give me anything measurable for me to be rewarded. Winning, solving the mystery, or even the realization of improving despite losing repeatedly. All of those is their own reward. And if you can influence that, you're awesome.